Isabel, I haven't seen you since um, since our live stream where we talked about the greatest horror movie directors. You should check that out, viewer, if you haven't watched it yet. It was really fun having you there. How have you been? I've been good. I moved. So different just... state or what? what's your address and social security number? Just down the street from where I lived before. So if you doxed me before, you can dox me pretty easily now. Fair but... enough. But something fun happened on that last live stream is why I bring it up. I believe you were given an assignment by by my viewers, by our viewers, by the chat. They want you to cover the career of rappers and horror movies. And this is the first of a 33 part series from Isabel that, that she's promised to complete. Uh, yeah, I forgot. And... <laughs> I forgot this that interaction it. happened. This is the is first that one. Why you did this? Is it was that actually the inspiration? Because I forgot. Yes. Uh that that's why I chose bones. It's also well, what else that's... is there? Don't do this again. We just did this on the live stream with you know Halloween H2O Commenters. and Halloween Resurrection, and you know, you count the faculty queen of the damned if you want to. There's plenty of Snoop Dogg ones. That's that's We've got like plenty it. of work for you to do here, is what I'm saying. But yes, that's why I picked Bones. And also to go to the question of career of rappers and horror movies, who I think the viewers were asking like pretty genuinely you know without too much irony like they actually want a take on it so uh yeah. i will provide one um another reason why we're doing bones obviously is because it's 2001 and all the movies i just named like you know also ghosts of mars even that movie is all within the the your cult boyfriend like sweet spot of um mm -hmm. 90s to very early 2000s horror movies uh and sometimes philosophy gets trendy and that's when postmodernism was trendy so here's a theory isabel that i've had about hip-hop music for a few years that no one likes and never has liked but i'm gonna tell it think to you carefully before you speak but i i speak with sensitivity and a lot of grace hip-hop music i think is um probably the best example of a postmodern music ever. I think it's better than like, you know, John Cage and Philip Glass. I, I think that it's actually true mm -hmm. postmodern music because it, it's it's literally you literally have to deconstruct pre-existing melodies in order to yeah, create. Okay. And it's also giving voice normally to the voiceless, at least when it started mm -hmm. out like. Uh, so I think that at least hip hop and postmodernism ha have always kind of been in step with each other uh not only politically but more importantly artistically so mm -hmm. this is and this isn't just rappers and horror movies because what we mean is rappers in popular movies in in the 90s yeah. and 2000s because horror yeah. was popular in the 90s and 2000s like they would have yeah. i'm sure they were in comedies as well we're just not talking about that but this is really yeah. rappers and postmodern horror movies so i feel like it's uh i feel like it's natural um and mostly because i think hip-hop is so modern, so. i definitely yeah, think do you disagree with that theory at all yeah. no it's better than what i expect <laughs> Wait, what i thought we were think? going down a. I only i listen to everything but country and rap <laughs> why would i be the person to say that no no but i, I gave it some thought I, I i've run that past no i i the agree bar and they've, they've hated that idea so I, I agree with that. Uh, I think in principle, I, it, at least in the sense that uh, I don't think what hip hop is today would ex would exist at least not in the same way. You know, like way before its creation. Unless, I guess other genres filled that role, but regardless, you know, just the process of like sampling and stuff like that. You know, a lot of people will say that like Philip Glass's Glassworks is the most um, it's the best representation of postmodernism in, in popular music, but I think that uh, I think that like introducing by DJ Shadows is probably a better fit, or even like low end theory by a Tribe Called Quest, like that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. So it, it's okay. no wonder why 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 uh why why rappers were in um were in uh, so so many popular oh. um postmodern movies. Um, yeah, although usually in like a more of a background role than than here at really? least off the top of my head uh at least off the top of my head um i could be entirely wrong about that but it, i i guess yeah, it might actually He's be kind of like movies. a 
maybe horror is unique because it started giving them pretty prevalent roles like Ice Cube and Snoop Dogg and um, I Love Cool. Dude. Yeah, there. I uh, the more we watched movies in that 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 realm, the more I, I started to see it was always kind of like as a secondary protagonist or something to that effect. You know, true. But then you like, get like like in a, any a it's like we yeah are the vampires right like so maybe there True. is something more to like how well they they fit in um i know it, it depends on the movie that we're talking we're talking about bones today and we are gonna i think talk about like like black culture and that those kinds of things but that conversation wouldn't apply to halloween h2o you know it wouldn't really apply to ghost yeah of mars, yeah really. that's what i mean yeah, yeah like exactly. i mean ghost of mars sort of gets into it because um a part of the plot is like this critique of you know Mm-hmm. oh woman cop w- woman ceo that, women cop more women cops you know is is the criticism the movie's making because it, it's it like is obviously true. that but, is true but like like with Aaliyah and Queen it's not the like band, the center of try the movie. yeah yeah and, try and, hard and, to and, it. and ghost of mars that i i would argue that's not really the 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 point but it's like a point the movie makes it is a point for point. sure but bones but the point what, what makes bones, bones unique also is that it's it's a black exploitation movie it's it's an exploitation yeah. movie to the core yeah. um and it's actually and it's also career. yeah with with a black man behind the camera like it's real <laughs> this is this is a black this is a black movie and mm-hmm. uh, it's gonna be awesome yeah with pam greer for sure uh fuck where do we want to start here oh pam greer is hot i think that's the thesis of the movie the thesis of the movie is Bianca Lawson is sexy. What movie are you watching, dude? We're, we're, we're going to debate which woman in this movie was hotter. Okay, I put it's on... Gonna like, like, like an... The thumbnail is going to be analysis of Bones, and people are going to be like, oh, this is going to be some hard-hitting criticism, and it's just two idiots debating which woman in the movie is more attractive. Which is why people watch me. Listen. I started making the thumbnail and I was like, how do I get this sexy picture of Bianca Lawson in here and not have it look? <laughs> okay, no, uh, I like a, like a fool, like a foolish cinephile. I put on the commentary to Bones to see if I can learn anything. The Snoop's on it. Snoop and Ernest Dickerson and the screenwriter are on it. And I learned that sounds nothing. sounds awesome. I don't know what you're fucking talking about. That it's, sounds okay, incredible. It's, it's awesome, but I didn't learn a thing really, but there's one part where like we first meet Bianca Lawson and she walks up and Snoop goes like, yo, this is my daughter in the film. I'd still hit it though. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then there's this whole so real. Get into an act. The only actually interesting uh, discussion on the commentary track is them going, yeah. And we actually had to fight really hard. Like the studio thought this movie was very incestual. <laughs> And we had to fight really hard. Really, I, I didn't get that vibe at all. Oh well, okay, okay. I guess there is the one scene, but and like... which is the best scene of the movie. But I don't know if we should go there first. That's not the best scene of the movie. Bianca Lawson, like covered thing. in blood in like white lingerie, getting raped by her dad dog. We'll we'll talk about your therapy later. But um, no, no, it's great. I I my my favorite part of the movie is actually um the the it's stupid to say but the opening credits just because i like the transition that occurs as the credits go on because it starts in a very like nostalgic like nostalgic for for a previous era of filmmaking obviously like pam greer's there it's like lovingly in like very earnestly uh like i i love this era for film this kind of the the mythos of that era for film even like the kind of myth of what the world was like during a period which is you know obviously not entirely accurate and how it like slowly transitioned into like the 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 horror of it no it's but, beautiful but it's beautiful like it's really it well gives done. the it gives the real poetry of the movie right in the opening credits because it's about like having the heart gutted out of a community because of um yeah because of the the, the invasion of drugs which are given to them by white cops right like it's like it <laughs> yeah, happens yeah, in the opening the... credits it's so cool I hate of Reagan. It's actually I recently watched Blowout, and it's kind of almost like the reverse of that because Blowout starts with this very kind of kitschy, uh, horror font credits, yeah. and like everything is very over the top and silly looking, and then it becomes like they're all like take off the costumes, and they're like, all right, let's fucking go home. Um, 
and it becomes like more mundane for a while. But um, yeah, no, I really like that that opening sequence, and and I like how it it contrasts these almost like two eras of filmmaking because you get on the one hand the kind of uh, warm hued uh, '70s infused you know style the the these these visual and kind of uh, uh, archetype throwbacks to to black exploitation cinema and it and it alter and then it immediately leaps to early 2000s steely blue kind of, i don't know if this was yeah. shot digitally but it certainly feels like something that could have been shot digitally or and the sound easily. editing like when it does oh my god yeah it is, it's, it's like this integration tapes it's like <laughs> yeah it's it's interesting because it's like it feels like Dickerson was like very aware of what was becoming the 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 aesthetics of 2000 cinema as it was happening like it like I I, yeah. I also recently um saw saw uh recently like saw one and it has that same thing like that kind of kind of gross kind of metallic gray you know the the only color that comes into the film is through these like very intense uh filters and like but most of the time it's like very distancing very steely like that and that was three years after this movie and in, in three years before that uh uh bones is already kind of like deliberately appears to be like explicitly aware of that as like a a, a trope or like a modern day thing because it contrasts it with like the earlier approach like like you didn't have to make it like gray and everything and it also i think is a nice just like hue contrast like cold and warm color so it, it becomes really interesting as the movie goes on you might appreciate Especially... this too then like the film itself is also a victim of what you're saying of where um of, of either where where horror was or where it was gonna go in the next couple of years like like you were just talking yeah. about because um, originally the film didn't open the way we saw it originally like there weren't oh, like really? flashbacks it was just the the 70s stuff and then and then Ooh. in the middle yeah i know <laughs> but uh, it probably would have worked fine it would have been a different kind of movie though maybe a bit heavier on exploitation yeah. than horror yeah. i'm not sure but it wasn't supposed That's to open with scary. those kids dying there so like even the film itself is a victim of what you're saying is the film itself wasn't allowed to be the film that it was structurally like supposed to be. It had to a, a, yeah. had to have a kill at the beginning and it had to have a kind of slasher set up with these kids, even though it's not like a slasher movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, the opening is very extremely 2000s. It reminds me of so much of stuff like the i don't know toolbox murders and like the second yeah. candy man movie. I mean, it wasn't supposed to be that was supposed to be in the middle of the movie as the transition i don't know how i feel about that but i'd be like interested if someone did a recut well i trust it. dickerson's good and and he's working with snoop and he's worked with with, with very famous rappers before that like yes, juice yeah, they worked with juice. tupac um, yeah. which is someone in, in our chat pointed out is, is basically a horror movie like there's a lot of like yeah. terrifying elements to that film as well and he, yeah. he i think he cut his teeth um being spike lee's longtime cinematographer like he he yeah. understands a lot of these concepts. Um, he understands cinema very well, and I think he knows how to how to put together a movie. And I'm sure it would have come out fine. Um, there's another big big change, but we'll talk about that at the end because it literally is the very end of the film. So, um, but yeah, I, I love the opening credits, and then and then we meet our group of kids. Who can I give a fucking hell yeah to? Scream Queen, Catherine Isabel, Ginger Snaps showing up here. Can we just get a round of applause? Yeah. Like she really actually is. <laughs> like because Scream, I love uh, her. a horror camp She's legend, great. man. Oh my god, yeah. little Ginger She's Snaps. Great. I think American she fits the material really well too. She did. I wish she was involved in the finale at all. <laughs> yeah, there was actually a point where I checked on Wikipedia because I was like, did I miss her die or something? No, like, like, like die? And they I go to leave and like her happen. brother's like, no, you stay here. I was like, why? Why did we even get to know this woman? So she's like <laughs> the only one that makes it out of this okay, which, which is funny. Which I would... Uh... I don't think we missed her die. I think I think I remember it correctly. She was told to stay. No, behind. no, I I checked just in case, and yeah, she they straight up are just like wait here, and she's like, all right, see you later, and that's the last time you ever see her. And then we meet Maurice, 
and the two brothers trying to turn Bones's uh the haunted house in the ghetto Jimmy into Bones. a full hip nightclub. Um, Jimmy Bones. Jimmy Bones. Um, Bones. Then we meet Pam Greer and Bianca Lawson. I don't want to do this scene by scene. I think we can just like jump around now. Yeah, we can just like get into it. But um, I mean, for what it's worth, I like the cutting between the past and the present. Like, I I really thought that was like the most dynamic part of it. So I may I I could be proven wrong. Like maybe the original vision was better. I I don't know, but I we'll, we'll I, I really say. yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I I I really liked the. Oh, I think the movie the contrast. Works. Yeah, I think the contrast works like extremely well. Um, I don't know. I find it really moving. Just cause, uh, again, because the 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 past is like this, just evokes all these senses of like community mm -hmm. or like even just like uh, uh, I think a part of it, if I read the film correctly, is that so much of it revolves around like uh uh jimmy bones uh his kind of like misplaced honor system and like faith in it and how like that's kind of being phased out because you know cops are putting crack in well, the streets and that's, like yeah, that's... everyone against each other that's like, why I think it's really, a cool horror movie because it because it complicates yeah. like an easy theme. Like it's not just um because there are beautiful scenes of I think Jimmy Bones or some people walking down the street and you almost see the ghosts of the past when it was like like uh, like yeah. a lively like yeah. uh yeah that's what like, I mean you know but then it's complicated by the fact that Snoop Dogg is <laughs> it's Jimmy Bones is a bad guy but like yeah, he didn't he's... want crack in his neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and like hyper literally when we're finally shown like what happened to Jimmy Bones, like he's essentially murdered by crack cocaine and then murdered by like the, the systems that brought crack cocaine into the ghetto. Yeah. He's murdered by crack itself and then by the cop and then by like the uh his own the opportunistic friend. drug dealer. Yeah, and then and then his friend who went on to take the gut out uh, the heart out of the community and then um basically Pam Greer is innocent in this. I don't see why 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 she would even be included here. Her character was innocent. All right. Oh, I mean, I, it seems like he he is sparing her because he knows she's innocent. Okay, that's Fair that's enough. like part of it. I thought is that because like he he commits suicide. He she doesn't stab him. He he grabs her and like does that. So I guess metaphorically that could be said that like black women were were forced to. Uh, we're forced to participate in this in order to survive yeah potentially yeah but i don't know so and still... i i really like how this is like a very classically structured gothic narrative like very in the most traditional sense of the term like there's the bad place and like the 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 long cap like decades long cap secret that all these people are complicit in you know like this thing that they're all trying to keep buried decades later and they're all complicit in it and uh yes. it all kind of like that's very very classic gothic horror very very classic and i like that i i like how it translates that to this is that it's not just you know some some like aristocratic family or like european it's it's instead of all that instead of like more i guess like henry james style narrative plotting it's it's about like yeah like the crack epidemic and there's I, also I intergenerational really guilt like and yeah. i think that's a lot of fun um, mm -hmm. and also again i i kind of mentioned this in passing earlier but how like the, that circumstance like turned people against each other and like made them complicit in like their own like degradation you know like the 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 opportunistic drug dealer and like the the guy who becomes the father of the main characters like they they are are turned into weapons by the system that's victimizing them you know they're, they're turned into participants in in that crime okay. and and, uh, and made to be made to support it even because then later in life you see he's become a bourgeois himself you know like he's, exactly he, he's upper middle class he's he he always dresses in a suit and tie now it's like uh his his family is very well off and he he has become a participant in the thing that was originally uh exploiting him i mean arguably he benefited the most in that situation yeah, yeah i mean the other guy's still just a fucking beat cop basically yeah. like he's still making like how much did he really benefit from all this and exactly and, um 
the other guy's still just like a drug dealer. You and know? it said something beautiful there too about about his about his son Patrick, who is kind of our de facto hero. Yeah, more basically. Or less. Um, yeah, like him growing up in that bourgeois household. Like he seems like so. There is a good amount of like tenderness, and like he seems like uh, like like more more in the moment or more alive when he's back in like the community that his family is actually from and like meeting yeah. Bianca Lawson's character. Like there's something that ignites inside of him. Like he was removed from I uh, like his cultural history and like him being able to be a part of it again, I think is a pretty beautiful thing too. That's kind of understated. Yeah, I agree because he's kind of just been relegated to the, the, you know, anonymity of suburbia. Exactly. No one really likes no one, no one, you know, people, parents bring their families there for the supposed security of it, but it's like completely anonymous. It's in, in a way like always like very individualistic, you know, like I, I grew up in a suburb and I cannot tell you any of my neighbors' names despite, you know, seeing the same people every day. Like it exactly. is but, but very... everyone in, in the ghetto is a character in this film. Like they, yeah, everyone better or for worse. Other. Yeah, you're it's like an actual and um, I mean, there's also like any number of like other aspects of that the movie doesn't really touch on but i feel like you the arguments could be made like how it's sub suburbs are relying on cars and so everyone drives everywhere and that's why yes. they all run into each other whereas like those tend to be like in a city you know you're that's beautifully everywhere. shown yeah because when they yeah. meet uh bianca lawson and pam greer they're on foot and they have to walk them to their uh to yeah, their house, yeah which adds more um interaction that, that would have never happened like in a neighborhood basically it, see this movie is actually thing. like really good in ways that you don't even realize yeah. when you're watching it and there's I like a that. amount of complexity and, for the uh, record, I I went into this movie under the impression that it was a vampire movie, that Bones was a vampire for some reason. I don't know why. I I thought I thought I read that somewhere, and I was very mistaken. <laughs> so like the whole movie, I was like, when does he start like sucking people's blood? Like when does that happen? Does like when what, what's going on here? And I I kept waiting, and it never happened. And I realized he's more like a vengeful spirit. Yeah, um, and if we're making this sound like like too serious, it's not. Uh, Dickerson does a no, really good. This is a horror be. comedy. This is a horror comedy as well. There's so many comedic moments. The fucking opportunistic mm -hmm. drug dealer guy. I forget who he's played by, but it is a real comedian. <laughs> like he's he's wonderful when he carries around his severed head. And yeah, is, he's just like, come on, man, this fucking sucks. Can I just die? And he's like, no. You know, there's a lot of comedy in it, and not a lot of it hits anymore. That's the one thing, but it's pretty, it's still a good movie. It's still a good movie, yeah. but, um, uh, they, hey, they really hey. raised up Snoop Dogg. I have something important to talk about. Bianca Lawson is, <laughs> you, can, you can go for this part. Bianca Lawson is, um, uh, unbelievable. I would be doing, a disservice to to my viewers, Isabella, if I didn't talk about Bianca Lawson um, a, a little bit, a little bit here, considering that I've talked about her just by chance in at least five or six different videos for five or six different teen television shows. This is a woman who's been playing a 17 year old for 17 years. I'm just going to do it. We Buffy, Buffy and... Yeah. Um, Pretty Little Liars and um, The Vampire Diaries and Dawson's Creek and uh, like um, Teen Wolf and Saved by the Bell. And I'm probably missing a couple because it's off the top of my head here. But uh, Bianca Lawson is a legend here. And I think she does a pretty good performance. Uh, my favorite scene of the movie um, is the scene where she's wearing the white lingerie and she's being covered in blood and is... It is the most memorable scene. Uh, it's definitely yeah. thought, but... and it's cut between her mother, played by Pam Greer, who is also exceptional and also dead sexy. Um, and and the hottest everyone in can the be movie. sexy. Yeah. Okay, this is no, that's not true. That's not true. Pam fucking Bianca Greer, Lawson. Bianca Pam fucking Lawson, <laughs> Beyonce's stepsis, bro. <laughs> Come on. And Greer is the milf to end all milf. So okay, we're not going to get beyond this. Beyond this, then okay, you go for five minutes on why Pam Greer. Is <gasps> I'm Bianca good. Lawson. I ma I made my I made my my. The statement. discourse just got good. <laughs> You're walking away from this, so I win. Bianca Lawson is sexier than Pam Greer, but this scene. Whatever you say, honey. 
this scene is uh it's cut between uh bianca lawson um the hottest girl in the movie being covered in blood and maybe raped by her father who's played by snoop dogg who's inhabiting yeah. the body of a dog and also pam greer doing a uh a seance and it reminds yeah. me a little bit of like fritz long i'm not even joking fritz long used to do a, in ministry guess, of fear yeah. at least there's this amazing seance scene he did a couple like kind of seancey scenes in his work and it kind of reminded me a little bit of that but like meets a house on haunted hill i think that's the mm -hmm. scene where i most got new horror aesthetics from yeah it. yeah i i me too actually but just to say what, 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 what we mean by that is is new metal like new and you and you horror yeah not, yeah yeah just so people yeah. who don't know i i guess it also kind of the opening does a little bit like with the cg and snoop dog monster in the ceiling which yeah um but, th but that one which for the, the record Bianca i Lawson loved thing, that shit i love I this the I fucking like the hr beginning. geiger like people in the walls shit like i like the, that the, i like that it's at the so end. It reminds me of like berserk, like it's just these fleshy walls of like damned souls, like grabbing people. But like I that love was that. metal as fuck. Let, let's so let's cool. talk about that in like one minute. Um, I still want to talk about the. Oh yeah, go back. Sorry, sorry, go back. I still want to talk about the the the, the, the sexy blood seance. Um. Yeah, no, that that's a spectacular scene. I think it's the most like a... riveting like editing of. The and it's also the most like horrifically confrontational part yeah. of the movie because like i said it's yeah. uh it's very unclear and it's very like demonic it is like i i, I still don't know exactly yeah. what's going on in the scene because it is mm -hmm. like aggressively sexual and and like here's the thing because we see we see patrick walk back inside like zombified yeah. right but that yeah. was forced into the movie by the studio so like i uh, like like, uh, like to, to, to like, avoid what? like implicate that it's not yeah incest. like to avoid incest so, so like <laughs> she's hallucinating that this guy she's into is raping her or something yeah exactly i guess that makes it an easier pill to swallow but i think yeah. the movie is actually going to some very like incestuous places and i'm and i'm not entirely sure what that's saying about the um about any the, of the uh, themes in the movie yes Yes, but yet it, it it works. It's horrific. It's gothic. It's bloody. It's sexy. But like, what, what is it trying to say? You know, like, what is that trying to say? I think that's probably the most like seventies horror thing about the movie, is like these kind of like sudden ambiguous gestures. It, it, it you know, like very Euro horror, very like mm. Jesus Frank, Jesus Franco, or like Jean Roland stuff like that. It, it's like that. It's just these random moments where you're like what the fuck was that all about and they just kind of say like fuck you like um god oh, what was the movie might maybe the blood spattered bride i might be wrong but there's one where it's like one of the main characters is like this kid who has like an incest thing for his mom and then they never elaborate on it and then him and his mom both die like halfway through anyway and so you're just like wait 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 go back like what the fuck was that all about like explain I mean... yourself <laughs> and then the movie just never does I don't want to sound corny or something, but it, 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 it easily could be like if you don't if you don't deal with with the, with the sins of the past, it will infect your like children. That, yeah, I feel like the easiest answer is that it's about this like generational trauma, like he suffers exactly his kids, kids suffer and so on. And, and so the reason it's portrayed here in in, in an erotic way and also a gory one is because it's a horror movie and they're supposed to kind of express yeah. their themes in problematic ways which is fine because i got to look at bianca lawson go like this and like arch her back and like fall into a vat of in blood a pool of blood <laughs> yeah it was pretty awesome and now we can talk about that wall of bodies that i also love the that wall you mentioned of loving bodies early. that's yes. awesome <laughs> this this movie really has so many different elements and so many different kinds of uh horror movies and that that's lovecraftian if i ever saw it like what even is it mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just a wall of mm -hmm. bodies and it's even the, the the comedy is still intact because he's like fucking shoving him in and then pulling him back out and shoving him in. And he's like, "Oh, dude, what the fuck?" So I, I should say that Snoop Dogg is actually pretty damn good in this movie. He is very good. yeah. There was a point where early on I was just I think more enamored with his presence because he doesn't actually do anything for a while. And I leaned it's over. It's a my powerful presence, like, though. 
I was like, he's pretty good. And Han's like, I think, yeah. I think he's just attractive. I think he's just got a lot of game in this movie. And I was like, fair enough. But then when he actually started performing, I was like, no, 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 no. Snoop Dogg's got in it. his death he's... scene in the past, I'm like, oh, wow. Snoop, oh, it's Snoop's so trying. Good. Snoop's so trying. Good. He did well. So good. But that, that wall of bodies, that's... It's, it's so... fun because it's like all of the... All of the kind of like like some kind of themes of of crimes against the ghetto that we're talking about, like given uh, physicality, given something, given yeah, something to look at. Yeah, I figured the the subtext was supposed to be like all all the victims of mm -hmm. of the crack epidemic reclaiming all the people who who uh caused it and were were complicit exactly. in it. And and like I said, it reminds me of um berserk which is like that's always like a faustian thing in berserk the the uh behelites in that oh like the like you make a de a devil's bargain to oh, and right. uh, yeah there's like that satanic side to it and like the walls of flesh that flame lives and shit and it's like it reminds me so much of that and i love it it's like it really brutal you... again very gothic very gothic. exactly it reminds you of berserk and it reminds me of uh the, the time period on it it reminds me of a dark castle movie that's not a dark castle movie because yeah that too that wall of bodies does remind me a little bit of the darkness from house on haunted hill when like yeah, they need yeah, something yeah, the fog. <laughs> exactly yeah. that like is all the other victims inside of this rorschach test mm -hmm. but like um, yeah it has a lot of Dark Castle qualities, which is fine. Dark Castle had a lot of power to it. Uh, and I still, I would definitely call this um, a, a film with a lot of postmodern qualities. But I feel like they're more deliberate here than they are when we're normally talking about Yeah, this feels sometimes a lot like, like it's on one level, like reflecting on the genre, but also at the same time, it feels like it's sincerely inhabiting that genre. Like this, yeah. like the the idea of like do a gothic evil house movie about a a, a sordid past like etc like that's very conventionally gothic but then it's like the mod postmodern aspect would be like make it about snoop dogg you know like normally again exactly like these, these narratives are about white people generally so i mean in that level it's yeah definitely more uh reflective or it's definitely like uh, uh commenting on itself like the idea that this is not normally something you see within this format but at the same time it's like also doing it very sincerely mm -hmm. so it's like i i don't know i don't know it's like and, it, and it like very authentically trying to be that kind of movie absolutely and and, and it speaks it's, to our main thesis of rappers and horror movies i mean that the, the, this same year dark castle had 13 ghosts come out this year with raw digga in 13 ghosts she was incredible in it and i, th I think that you're absolutely right it's, it's inhabiting the genre and i feel it's a i feel it's a pretty fucking like altogether sincere movie i think it's pretty sincere oh, one billion percent I, I i don't think it ever is like taking the piss out of it especially Which is, given the that's subject huge matter. though for for a studio film that's a huge yeah. thing to be able to say least of all one starring like a celebrity and banking everything on that you know like i mean i'm pretty sure even like it's a fucking dog like they're obviously referencing like so much that I, I I there's more like I know it's like genuine references in the movie or like allusions to the fact that it's Snoop Dogg guys and it's stuff like that and obviously the credit song where he you know name drops himself and stuff like that like he exactly it, like obviously like there is that 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 reflexive element to it but beyond that and also of course the black exploitation homage mm -hmm. thing and the casting of Pam Greer like these are all deliberate choices these are very deliberate choices um but as far as like the modern day part of the story the contemporary part of the story it it, it is very i think sincere I, mm -hmm. I i don't think it's taking the piss out of it at all um which would because that would be so disrespectful <laughs> given that be. again it's about like the crack but <laughs> you know like it, it, it'd be awful if it, it was like making jokes uh, I think Dickerson was was extent. passionate about this uh, about this film. Yeah. The, the studio wasn't because when the studio got it, like we said, they they kind of they kind of hacked it up in a couple different ways. And also when they went to um, market the movie, Dickerson was like, "You you you got to try to market this in white neighborhoods." Like a lot of Snoop's yeah. fans are white, and a lot of like fans of horror are yeah. white. Like like let's try to get white people yeah. to see this movie. But the studio was like, "No, this is a this is just a black movie." 
So they kind yeah, of did yeah. the movie a pretty bad so disservice. weird in yeah. like 2000s be like, let's drop a race film. You know, like it's just. Yeah, right. It, it's the same like mentality as like. There's like the, the reflexive the stuff that we're talking about. Like, sh- like the reflexive stuff we're talking about should have been like uh, so accessible already that it's not even funny. Because like Will Smith did a rap song for every fucking big blockbuster he did for the last like 10 years for like weird white people. Yeah. Like, it shouldn't I mean, have been so weird. I guess like the late 2000s and oh, certainly the 2010s is when like pe- the powers that be kind of caught on that white white teenagers and white 20 somethings fucking love rap music you know like that, that well, and also will all, smith all, is notoriously these... like safe and snoop dogg is subversive i yeah. think everything he's done is yeah subversive. yeah yeah uh, but and this I film don't know, is subversive like, flash forward to like 2016 and like every white 19 year old has a to pimp a butterfly poster in their room or something oh. you know so it's like let more in vogue now but I, so like, i i don't know i was a small child in 2001 so i can't really speak to like was that like as commonly thought of like that like white young people just love rap music or was that no, more i don't like think a... i think it was more on the nose remember when we meet those two white kids in the very first scene they're listening to eminem <laughs> like I yeah think it yeah is. yeah, yeah. And, um also uh catherine isabel is wearing a shirt uh with, with uh black faces on it i i forget i i forget right. exactly what it is well the I think more i think about her band. not being included in the finale the more it kind of makes sense because it's not her it's not her thing I'm to get involved in i'm right? surprised they didn't lean into it more like i feel like yeah. it's definitely making a point uh, on the with the whole like you know this guy rigged uh fucked over everyone that cared about him in order to get out of this neighborhood and he kind of rode the waves of that of like uh being complicit in that exploitation and that dehumanization and he rides that wave to i now have a white a white wife yeah. and i live in a suburb and like a, with multiple floor house you know all that uh, all that shit you know i feel like that's right for you know commentary yeah. like the same kind of commentary that we get in like get out a decade and a half later I feel but, like we're doing um, a lot of heavy lifting when we're like they're they're keeping his Catherine Isabel out of the finale yeah it's like they're 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 there's so much potential for these kind of like more uncomfortable topics like i i really expected maybe again this is like being familiar with more recent horror movies and like the kind of attitudes of more recent horror but like i expect them to get it into like Catherine isabel you know being like way too presumptuous about what she's allowed to say and shit like that yeah i would have liked down that road Exactly, which seems like a bit like too forward thinking for, for the movie. Yeah, I would it's, have liked it's her asking a lot to, for 2001. It'd be nice you if know, she had a conversation with Bianca Lawson about like, you know, like like two different like kinds of like young women of the same age and their different experiences or something. Or even with just yeah. Patrick, her brother, just some sort of scene where they yeah. acknowledge this. But most of the time that they yeah. spend is um, directed towards Maurice and how I guess he his race is um ambiguous <laughs> like that's most of what they yeah. end up talking about <laughs> that scene that the where he's like i'm the melting pot bitch <laughs> you would have to have but every I, I culture do, i did i did get a kick out of him being like dude i don't even know what the fuck you are I <laughs> I, okay speaking of maurice though i like his kill like the thing that immediately fo- it's I like great it's really amusing to me that he's the first kill it's him and uh the the brother I saw this movie a few days ago, so I'm forgetting their names. But yeah, I'm shocked but... that the brother got fucking killed. Like, Me I'm like, too. oh my he god, gets so but... little in the movie. He he doesn't really do much in it. I don't think he did exactly. anything like truly offensive. Uh, like Maurice stole the stole Snoop's uh, stole Jimmy Bones's ring and ripped off his finger and stuff. Like, I, I get that. I I really think like you get plenty from just like the dad dying and like it like it makes yeah. sense that in context like these characters are 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 making an effort to save him from like damnation yeah. but that when it comes you're not like it's kind of like horrifying but you're also like i don't totally feel bad like because he's you know the brother's it's like the one who didn't deserve it awful. brother yeah, did it's, not a, it's all that. these because yeah he's caught in the middle of like all these awful people who are all including snoop dogg including jimmy bones like all these bad people who did like varying degrees of like bad things and they all kind of 
He does. I wouldn't yeah. call anything the brother did bad. I get like if Maurice stole Jimmy Bones' ring while Jimmy was alive, Jimmy would have killed him. I get it. Like that, I totally yeah, that, understand. Yeah, that, that, I, I, I'll fuck with it. I don't mind. But. I liked Maurice's death though. That that was pretty cool when he follows like the hot girl up the stairs and then like get like that. Yeah, oh, that was fun. That was fun. That was good that stuff. That was great. <laughs> and then like the the maggots and that like him being eaten is restoring the flesh to yes. Uh, Jimmy Bones. And yeah. and I think that it's shot in a way that at least to me kind of not mirrors, obviously, but reminds me of that of that really kind of mystifying, um, disturbing scene of the, the, the sexy white lingerie Bianca Lawson scene. Um mm -hmm. because both scenes are are kind of are kind of about rebirth, right? And both scenes obviously mm -hmm. feature the dog very prominently. Um mm -hmm. and uh both are like pretty invasive scenes and both are kind of violent yeah. and sexual. Like I thought that that, that yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah. He, like you. Uh, or go ahead. I was just going to say once again, justice for the older brother. He did not deserve to die in this movie. Uh, I, I'm kind of, you touched on it earlier, but yeah, I'm still kind of like, I don't really know how to integrate the, the eroticism into all of it. Cause it seems so apart from everything else. Cause it's like, I don't know it's weird uh but like i'm not opposed to it i'm just i'm not like, opposed to it really either it. i'm just confused because on the commentary it kind of sounded like they didn't want the movie to seem like have incest qualities you know mm -hmm. and they're like why did the studio think this and and then later they were self-aware and they're like well i guess the dog jumps into bed here <laughs> and i'm like then like what what were you trying to do like what yeah it's weird it's like very unclear I'm, I'm cool with it being there but it should totally yeah it's just like it because like you're i get it like you you know reagan is satan you know the you know a cab and all that and it's like but also incest and i'm like it's like it's, it's kind of out of the left field when it crops up again and again and um and the, i don't know i mean like i i almost thought it might have something to do with like he comes back and he's the same age but pam greer is now like what in her 60s or something and it's like maybe but you know, like he sees the daughter and thinks it's her i, I don't but i oh. don't think that's what i don't think that's what's happening I, it's not I, a bad I theory though yeah i, I, so I thought that's where they were heading as i was watching it like that's where i thought it was going but then you get to the end of the movie and he's trying to now reconstruct his family unit which uh, that's what if we could go back to what you said at the beginning that's where I get Dracula qualities from the very end of the movie where he's yeah. like seducing both of them basically like into a family yeah, unit. in his own way and trying to bring them back together for like whatever eternity and what is it, is it Mr. Hell. Harper or something like Patrick has taken on like the role of the uh guy who's taking the, the journal like the main character of Dracula oh Harker? Harker Harker thank you John Jonathan yeah. Harker he's taken on that Jonah archetype Reed. now in the film's final moments yeah yeah. Uh, and also I told you the ending was completely not supposed to end like that. Um oh, yeah. Bianca How Lawson wasn't end? supposed to be like possessed by the oh, spirit of Jimmy Bones and yeah, throw up yeah, maggots yeah, the everywhere. Mortuary ending <laughs> where it's a classic thing from that era where it's just like everyone dies anyway at the end. Yeah. Dickerson says that the, the studio forced that ending and that he sounded upset about that because he's like, that doesn't make any sense anymore. Like, like metaphorically, like that, that ending doesn't make any sense. Like why, 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 why would it be, why would his daughter like carry, like a, carry that spirit within her, the evil within her or whatever. So, so far as I know, he just hates the ending. Um, I'm what, pretty sure well, I can justify I wonder it. Then what the intent was. Yeah. I think it, like what the vision was. I think it was less ambiguous because he was also talking about like in the same context of they had to switch around the, the structure of the movie to have a kill at the very beginning and to have like an open ended mm -hmm. thing. I think it was more mm -hmm. closed. I think it was more done. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it was probably just a resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he hated oh. the whole like looking at the picture again and the picture like none of that was supposed to be there. So oh. interesting. But Bianca Lawson still looks really sexy with maggots just flying out of her mouth. I'm still into it. Um, so, okay, let's talk about themes. We're we're just gonna we're just gonna talk about themes until the end of this video. Now, like, what other stuff? I think we covered the whole fucking movie, so now we can just dump around yeah, as I, much I feel as like you we want. Covered the the bulk of it for sure. 
I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm it, very it impressed by the film. Out. The composition is great. I think you can tell he's a he's a trained yeah. cinematographer. Um, there's not yeah. a single shot in this movie that doesn't ooze with atmosphere and style and a lot of like meaning, understated meaning yeah. that doesn't beat you over the head. As, as we were watching, we just kept going like, this is like really well shot, like yes. really well put together. Like I, I, expect, I guess I expect it to be more kind of generically schlocky and that's very specific like early 2000s way or at the very least like kind of like proto saw with like the you know cutting and like the yeah. sudden like leap forward edits and like uh, kind of whiplashy vibe and it, it doesn't really have that I mean it kind of does but kind of doesn't and even when it does I think it's really well integrated into like the over because it's like kind of new metal or new metal horror kind of, but yeah kind of but kind of not it's very exactly. very it's got like one leg in the 90s and one leg in the 2000s and it i just it it came out exactly one month after 9 11 so it, what makes it so like know. it's it's a lot it's like a weird. house on haunted hill or a 13 ghost but it has so yeah. much to say it has a lot more to say yeah um, it's kind of like a weird anomaly in the it, era, it is I certainly think. an anomaly and i can't think of another time that um that a studio uh, I put this much money into something that they even thought at the time was like niche was for a niche market. Yeah. And it, and it has yeah. so much to say. I think it's even positing that like there are, there are haunted houses that are just like a cancer on communities in every ghetto, like because of, yeah. because of the CIA, because of uh, police um, invasiveness, because of like systemic oppression. It's saying so much in, in a way that is, um, in a way that would make reanimator blush right like like there's still like mm -hmm. so much just good horror schlock here and then a lot of great mastery as well mm -hmm. it makes me want to watch more of his work because i haven't mm -hmm. seen much of it but I, I i'd be very interested to see more after watching this um very again just because it's like very like well-rounded the concept here like the idea of like all the visions of the past are references to black exploitation and all the present stuff is horror and it but it kind of like conflicts those two although i'd be curious to hear what he intended as far as like the conflict of those two styles right. like they they what is the the kind of synthesis of this you know like on one hand you have the 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 black exploitation of the 70s and then on the other hand you have 2000s kind of new digital horror or like proto digital horror and they collide and contrast each other and I, I i'd be curious like what he thinks that signifies or what the what the what the significance of that conflict is um for sure is it just like a new mode for for expression expression because like obviously black exploitation is exactly what the name says like on one level it's exploitation on the other hand it's kind of this strangely empowering strangely you know freeing uh mm -hmm. realm of filmmaking you know when you when you watch those movies um i i think that you it, know it like, just, like i think it's a truly postmodern thing because it's so reflexive right because i think that um yeah like his original intention of like doing the whole past and then the whole present uh but it works cutting back and forth too i don't think it, it takes anything yeah, away it's from that, it but it's Godfather a fact that like quality it's the fact that when when crack cocaine like hit hit uh, black communities, like ev the, the 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 cinematic context of black communities shifted too, and like the cinematic yeah. worldview of black communities changed as well. Like the uh -huh. genre changed entirely uh -huh. um, into something that was a, a morbidly and an ironic way like drained of color and then overpopulated with like some kind of a like like supernatural doom like it used to be this bright and glowing place with a lot of romance and tenderness um that mm -hmm. seems out of place and the new one i think they're uh, and also it's so reflexive that i think that you can look at snoop dogg as being snoop dogg himself this eternal kind yeah. of figure like existing yeah. in both then and now and it's kind of like a cycle of abuse of of people like that i don't know i was trying to yeah i was trying to interact no, I mean, with what you I were saying that, but yeah no that makes sense because like the only analog i can think of to this would be blackula because that is an actual black exploitation film of this that era but also a horror movie and in that movie they make the lead the the title character incredibly alluring and attractive and interesting and compelling like in the same in the same 
way that Lugosi as Dracula is is compelling. You're like this man is just like sexy and interesting and a commanding screen presence, and um, that is far and away from what Snoop Dogg is in the present day version of this movie, which is this this mesh in the wall that comes out and grabs people and pulls them right. back in and you know he has like this smeared face on the ceiling and that that grows out of it and but, uh, I, whereas I the the, the archetype he was doing in x in the exploitation era was like the gentleman gangster archetype right which yeah, was the, the, uh, which the, was heroic he's, yeah he's heroic he 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 uh advocates for his community he is kind of a a, a kind of paternal figure to everyone even the 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 old people older than him you know and and yeah. he is he the the kids there's one of the flashbacks where the kid like runs up to him and is like so excited to see him he's like paternal heroic like you said figure he, he's someone yeah. to aspire to within this community and now it's it's not really like that anymore not at all um, and and of course like the you could argue the movie wrestles with the like did this 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 fantasy actually exist or was it like an ideal that 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 era of film was like inspiring people to uh, aspire to? Um, True. Them in. But um, what what was that giving like genuine models for for action? Just you know escapism in its own manner, and like do you see that today? Which not really, but even in the two thousands, was that really much of a thing anymore? Cause, by the 2000s, most of what you got out of black actors, um, as far as role models, was like action heroes now. You know, like Will Smith was an action hero. Will Smith was yes. an Independence Day and Men Bly and blah, blah, blah. blah. He's, and, uh, uh, you know. And arguably his, his blackness was sanitized for mass white audiences, too. And you get yeah. Snoop Dogg here, and Snoop Dogg is, like I said, a, a, kind of confrontational and subversive. Like, in manifest like he can't change yeah. that um, he's very unapologetically all about it which i'm so uh, I, I i i made a joke when we were starting the movie i'm like what do you want to bet that he actually let uh convinced them to let him wear the blue bandana in the movie like what, what, what do you want to bet like he like that seems like something he would do and that they would be very upset about but that he would do anyway i mean he did it at the fucking super bowl so like you know another oh. fun bit that i heard was um Bakerson was like well, well i knew how to direct snoop and i just told him um you can smoke every single day you can get blunted up every day except for one when i got you walking up the stairs through actual fire for a safety concerns just just don't smoke you can smoke after that just don't smoke right then and there and he's like and snoop was a was a very professional actor and didn't smoke that one time <laughs> like Good for you. You know how to I direct my whole table. Um, I love the the, the <laughs> meme format, like this Snoop Dogg, the one person who's out smoked me meme. Oh, it is wonderful hearing, like to speak more reflexively too. Uh, Snoop on the commentary, just gushing over Pam Greer and going like, "I can't believe I got to like play her love interest. This is like a woman who, like, basically." Like informed me what 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 like sexiness was, and now and now she's like yeah. she's she's a living legend. And I I gotta say, when they go to the past, they don't do anything to Pam Greer. She is just unaging. Pam Greer, she yeah. she just she's looks just like unaging. A, like what? She can look twenty after... years younger. Yeah. This is like how many years after? Or no, no. Is this pre Jackie Brown or post Jackie Brown? I I can't post. remember when did Jackie Brown come out. It, it's a few years it. after but yeah, I mean, she looks like, the same age as snoop dogg in the flashbacks like yeah like you would not know you would not know they just slapped the wig on her and called it a day and it works completely she's still you know gorgeous. who's, she's still who's another gorgeous. you know another actress who doesn't age is bianca lawson she's in this movie <laughs> I can't keep it even remotely professional. When... Pam Greer is right there. Snoop Dogg understood. Oh my god! Me it's all about Snoop it's Dogg, all about we, Bianca we Lawson. She is like I will talk over you. Bianca Lawson is is one of the sexiest women ever. And um, was Pam Greer on Dawson's Creek and Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Pretty Little Liars? Oh. There would have been better shows if she had. Wow. 
Imagine if in season two of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, they're like, the new Slayer is here, and Pam Greer walks out. <laughs> like, 50-year-old but... Pam Greer walks out, and she's like, I'm the new Slayer. <laughs> I just turned 16 last week. <laughs> but see, the thing is, unironically, like, that's what Bianca Lawson does now. Like, in, like in 2015, she showed up on Pretty Little Liars, like, hey, I just turned 16. <laughs> and you're like, I buy it. I buy it because oh she's goodness. a goddess. Pam Greer should take notes. Mm. The disrespect. I respect Pam Greer. It's just, you know, literally one of the only women who's sexier than her is in this movie called Bianca Lawson. Are we missing anything Snoop that Dog, the viewers can be interested in? Noob Dog would not share the blunt with you. He would not. Noob Dog said, I know she my daughter in this movie, but I'd still hit it. it was actually like it's been so long since i saw him look so young that i was like yeah. oh my god i forgot like he's the, his hair my god they made they do snoop dog uh justice here he he did he did well in this movie i they think everybody did look. well there was no performance i thought was terrible yeah. at all yeah i mean like our our lead hero man is kind of i i think slightly undercooked compared to the characters around him Yes, like, I feel but like also it, the I, characters the center... around him, as we've covered, is Snoop Dogg, Pam Greer, and the sexiest woman alive, Bianca Lawson. That's what like, I'm how saying. Are you... What are you going to do? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Cause, yeah, because he's very, like, in a way, like, Byronic, just like a moral paragon who just kind of is in the middle of this kind of very thorny, complicated situation. And so it's just like, he's fundamentally not as interesting to me. But Oh, yeah, and also, like, even the... Maurice is, like, a, a character. Like if if he yeah. was also a character, it wouldn't. I don't think it would work actually. If he was like also like that, it might be too much. You got a fucking severed head, being a character for like three scenes. <laughs> like, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed Bones. You got any you got any final words no, about the no, film? No, I I like Bones. I think it's a great movie. All right, it's so that's the first of thirty three. The first of thirty three films you're gonna do about rappers and horror movies. This is exciting. Nice. I think you did well. Nice. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this.